Hello, anatomy colleagues, and welcome to station number 16. And this is one of my all-time favorites because I love to talk about the differences between the movable vertebrae and how we're going to be able to identify them. And as you recall, when we're talking about movable vertebrae, there are three types. They're going to be the cervical in this region, the thoracic, and the lumbar down here. So kind of the lower back region. We'll have separate videos on the immovable vertebrae, the sacrum and the coccyx um, in later stations. So let's talk about how we're going to be able to identify a cervical vertebrae from the rest. And I find this one the easiest to be able to identify because of these giant foramina right here. Now, these are not the vertebral foramen. All vertebrae are going to have that. That is where the spinal cord is going to be traversing. But right here in these transverse processes, which are quite small when we're talking about the cervical vertebrae, you're going to have these transverse foramina and only the um, only cervical vertebrae have these and this allows for the vertebral artery um, from the subclavian a branch of the subclavian artery to ascend up through the neck in order to make its way to the brain and so it's going to be one of the major suppliers of the brain so only these um, cervical vertebrae have this Additionally, both the transverse processes and the spinous processes could be bifid, and meaning that it kind of splits into um, two uh, projections. And not all cervical vertebrae will have this, and there's some variability between individuals, but this is something that you do often see associated with the cervical vertebrae, but you always have these transverse foramina. There are three special types of cervical vertebrae. Um, the first two um, vertebrae, number one and two, are going to be the most distinct. And C1, which is this one right here, or otherwise known as the atlas, think of atlas holding the world on his shoulders or bearing the weight of the world. So the atlas, or C1, is articulating with the head. So it's articulating with the occipital condyles um, of the occipital bone. And as you can note here, we have a fairly distinct ring of bone with no distinct body or spinous process, but you still have transverse foramina, right? So this will be C1. C2 is a very robust vertebra, and it will have a spinous process, it will have a body, but it does have this very distinct projection. It's a superiorly facing projection referred to as the dens. Sometimes you hear it referred to as the odontoid process. And this dens will project into the C1 region in order to allow for that rotation to occur between C1 and C2. The other uh, special vertebra is going to be C7. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, and six, this makes this one C7. And what is unique about C7 is that it has a very long and inferiorly, inferior posteriorly projecting spinous process that can be palpated and sometimes it can be seen throughout the skin, particularly if you flex the vertebrae. It typically is the longest projecting spinous process although oftentimes T1 is going to be very close, which is, uh, looks to be the case in this particular donor here. So C7 is, um, has this very distinct spinous process and this helps in terms of counting vertebrae as well. Thoracic vertebrae are going to have um, what's referred to as costal facets and these will be associated with the body this one right here is a hemifacet, and the transverse process. And these are going to be smooth areas of bone, which will allow for articulation with the costal cartilage, but specifically those ribs. So you will only have these associated with the thoracic vertebrae. So that's something that's very distinct for the thoracic. And lastly, there are the lumbar vertebrae. 
and they are going to be by far the largest. So if you have quite a few vertebrae and you're able to compare the size, if it's uh, the largest ones, those are typically the lumbar. But for me, I always kind of just use the rule of elimination. So it doesn't have a transverse process, or excuse me, it doesn't have a transverse foramen. It certainly has a transverse process because all vertebrae are going to have that to some extent. It doesn't have costal facets either and they are just rather large. So um, that would be something to kind of look at in terms of the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, its size is definitely going to be its most distinctive characteristic. And you can see the body is going to be quite large in comparison to the other ones. But of course, if you get into some of the, the more inferior thoracic vertebrae, they are also increasing in size as well. So you have to kind of look for those costal facets on those particular ones. All right, excellent. So hopefully um, we have some clues as to how we're going to differentiate between the movable vertebrae. If you have any questions on these specifics, please reach out and I will see you in the next video.